glad to have you with us. Now, the trial of Dr. Stephen Opuni, former CEO of Ghana Cocoa Board, is earnestly underway. Mr. Opuni, or Dr. Opuni, is standing trial for causing financial loss to the state. His lawyer, Samuel Kujo, is moving the motion asking that the AG hands all documents to them following an application he failed earlier, demanding that the prosecution provides him with all documents in its possession being used against him. He says they want all documents in the possession of the Attorney General and Coco Board and the Public Procurement Authority. The motion, according to lawyer Samuel Kujo, is hinged on Article 19.2e and G of the 1992 Constitution. Now, this reads, it's about a fair trial and it states a person charged with a criminal offence or offences shall be given adequate time and facility to put up his defence. Lawyer Benson Uchukwi is representing Seidu Agong and Agricult. Appeals Court Judge Justice uh, C.J. Honyenuga is presiding over the case as additional high court judge, deputy, uh, as additional high court judge. Now, Deputy Attorney General Godfred Yabua Dame and Deputy Attorney General Joseph Dendiok Femka and Chief State Attorney Evelyn Filson and others are representing the state. So as we know, um, Dr. Steve Nopuni and Seidu Agong, CEO of Agriculture Limited, are facing 27 different counts um, of various charges, including causing financial loss, loss to the state, abetment, and, um, and, and, and a host of other counts. Of course, Mr. Uh, Dr. Steve Nopuni is being, and Mr. Agong are being held due to a contract supplied Agriculture Limited, the CEO of which is Seidu Agong, uh, which empowered Agriculture Limited to supply some fertilizer to uh, the cocoa board for onward distribution to cocoa farmers. Now, we'll go live to Komla Adom, who is standing by at the courts for li the latest. Komla, uh, describe the scene there at the Accra High Court complex. Right, Kamala, if you can hear me, uh, what's the scene now at the Accra High Court complex? Going about the activities as they usually do here at the court premises. Uh, only that today I've seen about two police vehicles stationed here with about 10 to 11 or 12 police officials here at the court premises. Uh, a while ago, I saw minister, former Minister for Tourism, Elizabeth Ufusuijai, walk in. I also saw Ningo Pram Pram Member of Parliament, Sam Jata, walk into uh, the courtroom. So uh, the atmosphere here is business as usual. I have to say, Daniel, nothing much in terms of activities, in terms of you know people who have come here to offer solidarity uh, to Dr. Steven Opuni and businessman Seidu Agongo. It's actually a very quiet atmosphere here, Daniel. So has the hearing begun and what has been ongoing? Well, yes, Daniel, uh, the case has been called and hearing has begun. Uh, we know that Dr. Oponi's lawyers had uh, applied to the court for the Attorney General to furnish them with all the documents they intend to use uh, for this particular prosecution. And so a, a short while ago in the uh, lawyer for Dr. Oponi, uh, Samuel Kujo, moved the motion and, and ask the Attorney General to present them with all the documents. He quoted some uh, provisions of the Constitution. He, he says that the Public Procurement uh, Authority, uh, for example, acts or the motion, uh, he argues that hints on Article 19.2 uh, E and G of the 1992 Constitution, it talks about a fair deal or a fair opportunity, uh, which states that persons charged with criminal offenses shall be given adequate time and facilities to put up a defense. So uh, ongoing currently inside, uh, lawyer Sam Samokujo is arguing that the prosecutors give uh, their, their part of the, the, the case, uh, the defense uh, counsels, the, all the documents, all of them, uh, so that they will appropriately study these documents and put up a proper defense in court. So that's what's ongoing here at the court complex and inside the courtroom, Daniel. Right. Uh, Kamala, we'll come back to you for um, some more updates. You were saying then that beyond the former uh, tourism minister, Elizabeth Ofusua Jari, have you seen any other NDC dignitaries, dignitaries of the National Democratic Congress there? 
Well, yes, uh, about 45 to 50 minutes ago, I saw Ningo Pampa member of parliament, Samuel uh, Jata. Uh, he walked in, uh, and I also saw a former National Democratic Congress organizer, Yabwatin Jan. I also saw him here, a, you know, some 45 to 50 minutes ago. Uh, and so those are the only officials I have seen here at the law court complex here in Accra. Uh, I, I do not know if there are many more who are yet to join us, but I'm told that it's a very packed hall inside the courtroom at right. the moment. Daniel. Thank you, Kamala Adam. We'll come back to you when um, some more developments come up. Kamala Adam is a man there at the Accra High Court complex. Now, a team from the Ghana Health Service and the Christian Health Association of Ghana is currently locked up in a meeting with staff of St. Gregory Hospital at Kaswa Budumburam over the death of a nine-week-old baby boy after he was denied oxygen while on admission. This follows a joint news report put together by Jojo Kobna. According to parents of the deceased baby, doctors pulled off the oxygen mask, um, which the baby was depending on to breathe, because they could not afford the hospital bills. Let's go live to join News' Richard Kojonyako, who is currently stationed at Kaswa for more. Kojo, what exactly is this meeting seeking to find? Well, uh, first of all, Daniel, uh, I must tell you that things seem normal here at the Gregory Hospital here at um, Kaswa Budumburam. And it is, it, it's as if nothing has happened in this hospital staff are attending to patients, but the top officials of the facility are currently in a closed-door meeting with a team from the Ghana Health Service that has been dispatched by the regional health directorate of the Ghana Health Service upon the instruction of the director general of the Ghana Health Service. And I'm told by the regional director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Alexis Nangba Beifuga, uh, that the visit um, to the facility is to find primarily who is responsible for what and to glean facts on the ground surrounding the death of the nine-week-old baby at the hospital. Um, the staff here are, are type blame. They, they do not want to speak with me, but uh, the, the, the ones I've been interacting with tell me that they also have a lot of challenges uh, because a lot of people come to the facility. They, 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 their relatives virtually uh, dump them there and then refuse to even come back, and so uh, deaths are piling in the hospital. And so sometimes... Um, a lot of them cannot be blamed entirely because the, the system they are currently running is like a business model because they also have to account for the drugs and the consumables they spend on um, the, the, the people that come to the facility. Uh, but this is not the official word from the hospital. Yes, this is not the official word from the hospital. The hospital administrator uh, this morning, I, I attempted engaging him. He said that because the Ghana House Service has a team here, it wouldn't be prudent for him to speak on the matter because the matter is now under investigation. Uh, I've also seen here the Christian Health Association of Ghana, the charge, because uh, this uh, facility is a charge facility. And they are also, um, um, I mean, engaging or they are also investigating the matter. Right, but have we gotten any official word from any of these bodies since they came for the meeting? No, because when they came, they tore the facility and then they, they went um, into the closed, uh, closed door session with um, the, the staff of the hospital. What is the expectation of the staff of the hospital of this meeting? Well, because the staff uh, have still remained tight-lipped. Um, they have not told me what the expectations are, mm -hmm. but I can find out from, I mean, I found out from, a few of the people that stay around, and some say that sometimes they virtually have to shed tears because people are poor, they come, they are unable to pay the bills that are given them. Richard Kojonyako, thank you very much for your time there. He is our man on the ground at Kaswa. Well, in case you missed the story, here's a recap of it. Mm. Prosper's father, Kennedy Kwao, explaining why they chose to give that name to their son. But that blessing has been cut short. Prosper was born on January 19, 2018. His mother, Sefa Ako, said her child became ill and was sent to the hospital on 5th March, but died three weeks later. Baby is sick on Thursday. Thursday evening. Uh, Thursday evening, Mo uh, 
Saturday evening, Friday morning, I took him to hospital. He's not breathing well. I admit, admit I they give him blood. So the doctor say they will transfer us to Kolebu on Monday. But they, uh, the bill they give us is 5.33 before we move to Kolebu. Sefako tells me she was looking forward to her son's quick recovery, but that never happened. He died at a doctor's at the hospital, pulled the plug on the oxygen machine Pospis Life depended on. When I call my husband, I won't get him. His, his phone is switched off. So that Saturday, the doctor came. He said, uh, I hear from my husband, I say I didn't hear. So he removed the oxygen. That Saturday, he removed the oxygen. Even uh, at six o'clock, the baby is not breathing well. I, I'm crying. The nurse come and put the oxygen. So it's too late. Sefa Akos said, Although she had two other children, the memory of losing her son because of money is painful. Hmm. It's difficult for me, but uh, I feel bad. Feel bad, so bad. Because of money, that is why. If I have money, I can't go like that. But I didn't have money, that is why. Ninja wants to put the baby on the motor, but me, I refuse. Uh, Why? Because I feel I lost the baby. When they put in the mortuary, I'll come and pay before I collect the baby. That is why I refuse him to put on the mortuary for me. Kennedy Kwao says he tried to engage his employers to advance him a loan to cover the bill, but the money came too late. I was outside Accra when I made a phone call back home and learned my son had died. My wife could not reach me because of bad mobile phone reception. In fact, I was broke. I had only 20 CDs of money. Administrators of St. Gregory Hospital, where the incident occurred, have declined comment on the matter, explaining the Central Regional Health Directorate is investigating the issue. Georgia Kobna, Joy News. We stay with the issues having to do with healthcare delivery because there's a shocking revelation at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital that an 80-bed facility for accidents and emergencies built in 2014 is not being used, while a 36-bed surgical, medical, medical and emergency unit is choked beyond capacity. Reasons given by hospital authorities include the continuous leakage of the roof of the new ANE unit, which has prevented it from being used. Here's the CEO of Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Felix Tenya, talking about why problems persist in the ward and what they're doing about it. The standards of, of, of thing and the, what we want to achieve should be achieved um, and to be agreed upon by the parties. You know, and so uh, we should know, one, the, first, the Minister of Health is the one who is bringing them. We should know that if it's Kolibu, Kolibu is the one who is receiving them. Who is the one who is servicing them? Who is the one who is building? Who is the one who is supplying, uh, doing the roof? Who is the one who is doing, who is the one who is the contractor? So all those things should come clearly. And the three parties or the parties should sign to it. And then the person, obviously, who is the, uh, the recipient will have the leverage to be able to say, this is not what we agreed on. This is what we agreed on. It is with this make, it should be this, it should be like this, it should be like this. Because the Ministry of Health is all on site. So if it's Kolibu or it's Bogatanga Hospital or it's whole Hospital, if you don't involve the recipient and he has no hold and no stake, no locus to be able to intervene, then the wrong things surely will get done. And then it is handed over, only for them not to be able to use it. You know, and then they will have to, because it's cited there, they will then have to find the limited resources they use to put it in place. Now, the Super Morning Show team of Joy 99.7 FM toured the new unit 
and lead producer of the team, uh, Papaya Wasari, has joined me in studio to for us to discuss uh, that business. Papaya, thanks for joining us. Now, yeah, yeah. what did we observe when we got there? Yeah, so we observed some very, very unfortunate incidents at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And just to say that this was really triggered by some of many, many concerns, rantings about people's bad experience of social media. So we as a team decided bad to... Bad experiences at the hospital. Yes, exactly. And we decided to, on the show, run the story. And also just right after the show, also head to Kolebu Teaching Hospital. And we had our own observations then also had an official guided tour of the place. So we first, our first stop was really the surgical uh, medical emergency, where we really saw that, as we earlier indicated, it's a 36 bed uh, facility, but really the, the conditions there, I must say for a better want of a word, are very, very terrible. We saw some people who were really on being treated on wheelchairs and all of the rest, and really the conditions there to me, was not really something that smacked off an emergency place for people to go. So tell us about this new 80-bed facility for the sake of our viewers. Yes, yeah, so this 80-bed facility was really started in 2014, according to hospital officials, but they had some problem with a leaking uh, uh, difficulty, which has not been able to help them move. But I must also indicate that the Gaini uh, facility, uh, uh, the Ghana emergency has also been so relocated. That's a gynecology emergency yes, has been that. relocated there. We saw beds with monitors and all of that, but they tell us that they have to spend quite a bit of money to be able to renovate. So, so we have 300,000 Ghana cities. Yes, exactly. So we had four years up to now that that part of the facility is not being, being used. But we are being told again by hospital officials that close to about half of the month, the middle of the month, they are going to move there. But I must say, Daniel... Because well, the middle of the month is Sunday. Yes, exactly. But I must say, Daniel, with the conditions in which I saw there, I'm not sure that that deadline by the hospital is really going to be achieved. So were there any other takeaways that we got from the place? Yeah, so we also spoke to some medical practitioners, and here I mean doctors, off record. And I must say, s they were very, very... Uh, uh, how do you call it, very, very frustrated. I must recall one very, very clear example of a doctor who had worked there for over 15 years. And he said, hey, you know what? We just have to, if we sell one, uh, how do you call it, one V8, it could cater for such and such and such. So there are quite a bit of uh, frustrations with the medical people. And also the conditions there generally, I must say, are not really conducive for health practice. And the, and the and the earlier they really move to that new facility, the better. Because this, I must say, is an emergency response. And we came across three ambulances the day that we were there. And we really have to do something quick about it. Afei Awasari is lead producer of the Super Morning Show on Joy FM. Uh, that's a visit that the team took them to that facility. You're still watching Joy News today. I am Daniel Daze. Stories gone by so far. We have visited Kaswa in the central region where the Ghana Health Service is currently in a closed up me in a tight meeting with the Christian Health Association of Ghana over the death of a nine week old baby who was taken off of oxygen supply because his parents could not pay 535 Ghana cities. Still up ahead in the bulletin we'll be visiting the Kaiser flats which are due to be demolished. That's coming up after these important messages. Let's start watching Joy News today, and we'll go back to do a lot more stories having to do with our healthcare delivery, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, the Tema Development Company, TDC, says it has cleared all hurdles in its way to start demolishing the four dilapidated blocks of the Kaiser Flats this month. Supervising civil engineer for TDC, engineer Edward Mensah Sanjok, says the exercise will take three months to be completed. 48 engineers regiment of the Ghana Armed Forces has been contracted to undertake the demolition exercise. Correspondent Kwame Yanka has more in the following report. Addressing the media, Tema Development Company says the demolition has become necessary following successful eviction of occupants. 
Despite the dilapidated nature of the blocks, some occupants earlier resisted attempts to be evicted through court actions. But supervising civil engineer for TDC, Edward Mens and San Jok, said all hurdles have been cleared. In the moment from now, we are envisaging that uh, somewhere this month we'll get the contractors on site for the project to start. Uh, it's going to take roughly about three months. 48 regiment engineers have been contracted to carry out the exercise. No, for now we have dealt with all the hurdles and the bottlenecks. Like I said earlier on, initially it was a resistance of the occupants. But now uh, they have seen the reason why we need to pull down the structures. When all the other agencies came in, NADMO, uh, EPA, in fact, the buildings are in a very deplorable state. If you are a technical man, you will even enter the building. But because of ignorance, people sleep there. So the buildings are such that they can collapse at any time. And we don't want a national disaster. So as of now, I don't think there will be any resistance or any hurdle that will push the project further. We are firm up on the ground. Mr. Sanjok said, apart from TDC, several institutions are involved in the upcoming demolition exercise. The stakeholders, we have the occupants, we have the, the residents around the area. We have TMA, we have a Ghana Fire Service, we have EPA, uh, we have the insurance companies, we have... Ghana Water, we brought all of them on board because they all have their services. Electricity Company of Ghana brought all of them on board to make sure that they actually take up their services for the building to be free and so that when the demolition starts, it will not harm anybody. After the exercise and the debris have been collected and the place have become very clear, we will then think of redeveloping new structures at the same spot. Meanwhile, the Environmental Protection Agency says it will ensure that TDC stays within the permit obtained for the demolition. Abdullah Abubakari is Senior Programs Officer for EPA Tema. They were given a permit with the permit conditions, which strictly tell them to go according to those proposed demolition or mitigation measures. So basically, that is the first rule. So once the, the demolition is ongoing, it is our duty to make sure that they go strictly according to those mitigation measures so that they can do the demolition peacefully and then leave the environmental intact as it is without any further potential hazard. The EPA are always part of the project. So as it is ongoing, we do what we call a monitoring. We go there to check whether they are complying with the permit conditions. If they are not doing so, then we have to draw the attention to the permit conditions that look. You were asked to do ABC, so you have to go according to that. If not, if a complaint is received that they are polluting or they are, uh, somebody is being affected, we need to get there and do the investigation and make sure they comply with the conditions. Glyco Insurance is to provide insurance cover during the demolition exercise. Kwame Yankers reports for Joy News. Now, Agriculture Research NGO Center for No-Till Agriculture has begun field education of farmers on fall armyworm control in endemic areas in the Ashanti region. The Regional Coordinating Council is spearheading the initiative as a report of re-emergence of the destructive pests in the Echima and Wabieja North District. Panicking farmers are calling on governments to intervene ahead of the planting season as the Ministry of Agriculture hotline for early reporting is yet to catch up. Nana Yaljima reports. The worms are on my farm now. Initially, I thought the holes in the leaves were as a result of the rain. I just learned it is the worm. 65-year-old Dazen Pepra took to farming on retirement as a tailor in a company in Kumase. He has, however, had to count his losses following four army worm devastation of his farm. Memories of last year's invasion and destruction of farms by four army worms are still fresh on the minds of farmers. They still have little or no idea on how it can be detected, especially at an early stage. Absence of such knowledge has caused several farmers to lose huge sums of money, either in purchase of chemical or poor yield. Dr. Kofibwa of Center for No-Till Agriculture gives clues on early detection of the pests. Run your farm and check the leaves. You see in the very early stages 
you will not see holes, you will not see anything, but you see some white specks, strips on, on the leaf. And if you happen to have two, three, four of this on your farm, then you have to understand that the eggs have been laid, the larva is hatching, and it, it, has, the, it has started feeding. That is the time to spray. To the is, soil. is it possible to er eradicate this um, fallen wood? Uh, huh. it, is, it is very easy to control it, but complete eradication is something that uh, uh, it's, it's a problem because you see the fall armyworm in our environment it likes warm environment and there are several alternate hosts dr boa advocates mass education of farmers at Chimawabeja municipal assembly and ashanti regional coordinating council say they are working with relevant agencies to overcome the challenge elizabeth ajaman is regional deputy minister they are going to try a particular chemical on the uh, army worms at infancy. So we came and they demonstrated what they were going to do. I, in fact, I have never seen these army worms before, but today I have believed it. It's, it's, a, it's a fact that if we don't take care, it is going to affect the uh, maize growth and so on. And the government is very particular about this uh, planting for food and jobs. They have combined two chemicals. One is called Savia and one is Strike. And they tried it. And in, after five minutes, the worms were started coming out. I'm surprised. But they told us that they, we can see its effect by tomorrow. But this one took only five minutes and they are still coming out. Nana Ojima reporting. Let's go back to health issues now. And the Ministry of Health has rolled out emergency response plans to deal with preventable deaths in the country. The ministry says it has taken steps to address some of the challenges associated with response to emergencies in the country and that the procurement of new ambulances and training of frontline healthcare professionals to manage cases are a few of the plans to address the situation. Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Anthony Nsiasari, announced this at a media briefing a few minutes ago. We'll bring you the sound of Dr. Anthony Nsiasari shortly. 